Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and we're back with some more Mass of Orion. So I'm just taking a look at our current standing in the game, and as it stands, it looks like we're leading in all of the categories, and the Mershon Empire are no more. We took them out. They're the only race we have yet encountered because we're caught in our own little pocket of the galaxy, and at the current moment, more or less trying to colonize the area that we're able to expand into and also track down some pesky space pirates and possibly tackle a space monster over in the uh, Ibis system. In any case, so let's go ahead and jump into things. So there was a structure built somewhere, told me to. Let's just make sure that we are building things as we want. So if I remember correctly, I was building this mostly just to see what it did, to see if it gave us any morale boost or anything like that. And speaking of morale, currently on Ptolemy 2, we have a morale of 100%, which is fantastic, but also means that we may be able to up taxes now. A lot of that depends on what the rest of our planets are like, so we might take a look at that. As far as further building here, it looks like we can build this soil enrichment facility, which would give us an additional food. And we also have the possibility of doing this toxic processor. I like reducing pollution as much as possible, so I think I'll cue that first. And then I'll do the soil enrichment. Alright, moving on to our next colony, we have Gata Prime which is currently working on a Neutron Collider. I think more or less we'll queue up the same things here. And let's move over to the next colony, which is our... Oh, I wanted to check the morale. So Gator Prime is at 100%. We're 85% here, and we do have a Striking Worker. What is our current taxes at? I'll take a look at that later. But it seems like the only planet we're having issues with is Furious Prime here. And that's mostly because we don't have really any of the support buildings uh, yet, which we are going to be start working on here soon, as soon as we get this pollution more under control. So, might as well queue things up here too. What would be good here? Well, we want to get... Lucian down. I don't think we need to worry about population growth necessarily on this planet. So I'll, I'm going to queue this first. What are we current working, currently working on? Because this looks like it's only going to take two turns. That's something that they might have already started working on and we can use production for them because two turns is pretty short for this building. I guess we'll queue that up. That's a pretty quick building to work on. And then we have Soul Prime here, which we're currently doing that Neutron Collider. Then we're going to build a colony ship and then work on some pollution cleanup. I think uh, go with the Toxic Processor and soil enrichment, just as we've done with our other planets. Let's take a look at our empire tab here so we can see what our tax rate is at. So currently we are only getting this much taxes, which we're making a profit, but not much of one. I'm actually thinking about bumping that up so that we can actually get more of a profit going. Now the end result of that is Fierce Prime here is probably going to have more striking going on. I think that we're just going to have to deal with that because our other colonies, Gator, uh, Gator Prime and uh, Ptolemy 2, should be fine here with uh, that morale of 90%. It's just one of those things that we're going to have to get Fierce Prime building this structure as soon as possible. Maybe we'll rush by it. As a matter of fact, I'm actually thinking about stopping the pollution cleanup so that we can get on that, because next turn I may be able to rush by this. 
and then we won't have to deal with the morale we'll get more of the population working for us which uh will mitigate some of the issues we're having on furious prime then we can get back onto the pollution the pollution cleanup which i might as well actually cue that Oop. there we go all right i think we're more or less set up so that we can start uh churning through the turns here so just keep an eye on our our fleet here as we're trying to track down Space pirates and possibly confront that monster as i said i don't remember what its strength is it could have been quite more than what our fleet is able to deal with with the strength of 4000 i don't remember if it was 2000 or 22 or 20 ish thousand so if it's 20000 obviously we can't tackle that yet All right, we have another Neutron Collider and Soul Prime. Let's we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, we should be fine with the production as it's going. We also do have a colony ship that's making its way over to Ptolemy 5, I believe, which is, honestly, we don't have that many habitable planets in our system. If I open the, the planet tab here and I go to Biome, most of the planets are not very suitable uh, to uh, habitation. Uh, the only real other candidate is uh, Gammon 3 over here. But uh, I have to ensure that's safe with my fleet because, as I said, there is a space pirate base going uh, somewhere sending space pirates at me. Now, I could be wrong, but we have seen space pirate fleets attacking, and I don't want to have the uh, colony ship be vulnerable. So... We'll colonize that a little bit later. All right, see, there's another space fire fleet. And we're seeing that this system does not contain that base. So it's either in this system or this system. Now, I would find that odd if it's in this system, the space pirates are going this way, but I think that's technically possible. We finished our research. Our scientists have made a new discovery. Gives us a couple buildings, one that ups our research and one that ups our production. Let's choose the next research here. And the cheap one would be this, which gives us either a spy bonus or a population growth bonus. Population growth is always nice. But one of the things that we're kind of hemmed in by is these unstable warp points. And I'm wondering... I don't remember off the top of my head what it was that I needed to be able to get through those. But I have a feeling it's tech that is in this tier. Not something that we necessarily have access to yet. What does genetic mutations give us? So it gives us terraforming. Well, that sounds like a fantastic idea. So we probably do want to research this so we can get on to terraforming. As that will envir uh, a, uh, alter the environment of uh, the planets to better suit us. And that could be a good thing. If that allows us to switch a high gravity planet to a normal gravity planet, for instance. Uh, again, I don't know if that's something that this does. That could be something that we get a little bit later on. That would definitely be a good thing. So let's go ahead and research that. All right, and let's deal with this pirate fleet. Should be able to easily defeat it. We'll just simulate that as should be an easy victory. All right. We'll go ahead and queue a move into the system. We can't actually see the space monster here. So it looks like we can defeat it. It's at 2,823 strength. Uh, I have not yet encountered a space monster, so I'm actually very curious of how this will go. So let's go ahead and queue up the move here. And we'll see if this system is actually worth the fight, for one. But secondly, maybe there's something we get out of beating uh, this space pirate. Alright, we also have a fleet needing orders. I'm going to assume that that is... Yeah, it's a space factory here, which we're going to start it on a project to build a uh the gas harvester on this gas giant which is going to give us credits which is something that we uh are actually lacking here you know i forgot to quick buy this but at this point uh, i don't know if i see the point in quick buying it uh probably a better idea to just save the money 
We can go through the turns. We have a lot of other stuff going on here, too. And I'm going to move over here. And we can colonize Ptolemy 5 here. Now, Ptolemy 5 is a little bad uh, situationally because of food production. This is a desert planet. So... Food production is a little low, but other production is okay, and this can hold a lot of population. So, And it also has Dark Quartz, which gives us production bonus, so I think it's worth colonizing. Okay, so we've got our production set up. What do we want to produce? Well, the first thing I think we should produce is some of the buildings that help with uh, food production. For instance, hydroponic farm just gives us two food. It's a great building to start off with. It helps the population grow. I think that's one of the best choices. We could also get uh, biospheres soon after that, which gives us food and research. And then we can move on to automated factories and things like that to get production running. But I think population growth early on is a good thing. Right now we have zero growth. But uh, as we get population, we'll be able to put some of that into food production and other things to allow for that growth. But this hydroponic farms will allow for that growth initially. And we'll move from there. And we're going to need that fruit production on a planet that's a desert planet like this. All right, so that's our first uh, colony. Soon we'll have another colony, set, colony sent over to Gammon 3. Hopefully our fleet will be able to secure that by the time that colony ship on from Soul Prime gets produced. All right, uh, let's go ahead and progress to the next turn. Welcome to GNN, Galactic News Network. The Galactic Union for Mineral Standards has upgraded the mineral classification of a human planet thanks to recently discovered deposits of valuable minerals. Hey, that works for me. Uh... <laughs> More mineral richness uh, for uh, Soul Prime here. Great. That gives us more production. Make things uh, get uh, out the door a little bit quicker. That's <laughs> that's nice. So, good news. And we also built something on Gata Prime. And what is... Th uh, this is a new structure that we uh, have now, which is going to up research. So, we might as well queue that. And I'd like to queue that at, uh, oh, Ptolemy 5 is, is getting through its production here. Oh, Ptolemy 5 is the new colony. <laughs> I'm, I meant Ptolemy 2. That was what I was thinking of. We'll go ahead and queue that there. You know, with Ptolemy 5, we might as well queue up the things that we want to do. So we'll get biospheres going. And then I think I want... The automated factory, then the research lab, and that should be a good start. All right, Ptolemy 2, this is what I was thinking of when I said Ptolemy 5. We want this queued up as well. All right, looking good. And we're one turn away from having that structure in Fierce Prime. And then we can switch over to cleaning up the pollution again. Ooh. All right. Let's take a look at Fierce Prime now. So we have all our population working for us now. We're doing pollution cleanup which is severely stunting our production capacity here. I'm actually thinking about taking this unit here 
sending him over to pollution cleanup. Uh, technically, it doesn't do anything for us, though. But that growth is almost insignificant. I guess I'll put this guy there. I mean, maybe it's marginal. Pollution cleanup there. Otherwise, I don't think we have anything else going, so... We may be able to jump in this turn, get an idea of what the system is. That looks like a promising planet. Oh, heck yeah, it is. So it's medium in size, normal gravity, Terran biome with abundant resources. No special, but uh, that's definitely worth fighting the, uh, the space monster. At least I hope that fight will go in our favor. Uh, again, uh, at the current state of the game, you cannot uh, retreat from a battle. So hopefully my fleet can tackle it. Currently, we don't really have much in the way of threats outside of the potential threat of a space pirate base, possibly in Gammon, as we've already checked all of the other star systems that we can currently go to. All right, so let's go ahead and end the turn. And we now have our colony ship, which is going to... I'm going to move it to this point. Uh, and I'm going to wait for my fleet for the rest of that. We have cloning center on Gator Prime. We should be good for our production. I have a bunch of stuff queued up. Did that one building in Ptolemy 2 ever get done? Uh, it looks like it's about to be completed. And then we can figure out, does that actually give us any benefit? Uh, or morale or anything like that? Or is it something that's meant for... Uh, spy defense, which is not something that currently is in the game, which is honestly not useful. It's kind of our guinea pig build there. All right, let's just double check soul in this production. That all looks good. Okay, now let's do the combat. So we're going to jump over here to the planet. And we're going to attack the space monster. And... Let's just double check the numbers here. 2,823 looks good. Victory chances. It's not giving us a big edge, but uh, hopefully it's good enough. That's favorable, but all right. We're definitely going to do this on the actual tactical mode because I'd like to see what a space monster looks like. All right, it looks like uh, kind of a big space fish. All right, let's pause that on up. I don't know what this thing is going to attack me with. It has three, three dragon breasts. Range is 63.5 units. What can our weapons do? So it can hit us further away than our uh, proton torpedoes can hit it. Which is bad. And our beetle here is more or less going to be useless other than just maybe giving us a little bit of point defense. Now, I'm going to assume the dragon's breath is more or less a, a beam weapon. How far out do our mass drivers reach? Only 42.5? And it doesn't seem to matter whether it's... You know, I'm looking at the... Are all of the master drivers on here point defense? Hmm. Oh, well. I'm going to have to check that later. That might have been a, a failing by me that I made all of my weapons point defense, although I don't seem to remember that being the case. All right, here comes the dragon. All right, I don't see its breath. Oh, it is It is more or less like a... Oh, there goes one of my ships. Oh, it counts as like having shield. Jeez. Ouch. All right, let's hope to not lose any more ships here. I, 
think we have it. Oh, Cruiser just took a big hit. Come on, get it off. There, we got it before the Cruiser could go down. That's good. All right, so we lost one of our small uh, frigates. Heavy uh, damage on a destroyer and a little bit of damage on our cruiser. Otherwise, we were victorious. All right. So it was definitely a learning experience there. No real reward for that. And I'm going to go ahead and cue the move to Gammon here. Now, I'm a little bit uh, wary of the fact that we have some damaged ships, but uh, I think we'll be all right. Now, the one thing I want to do is I want to look at the ship designer here. I just want to open it up and make sure I set these up correctly. You know, we're actually getting an indication of range here when I'm looking at it like this. But they don't give me an indication of range here that I notice. It does appear that only some of the weapons. Now that I realize that it is telling me the range, but just not on this screen. So if I, if I hit cancel and come back here, I can get an overview of the range of the different weapons. I can kind of get a little bit better idea of the effectiveness of some of the weapons that I have and whether they're better or not, because that was one thing I wasn't 100% sure of. So, just to get an idea here, so mass drivers are a range of 40. I really wish that they would put this information at this part of the ship designer, so that I actually could directly compare different weapon systems and actually know which one was truly better. Because this is just not enough information. But, any case, uh, let's go ahead and reduce the number of mass drivers here, just so we can fit on some of the other weapons. So, I'm going to try a fusion beam here. I'm not going to put any modifiers on it. I just want to see if I hit... Well, the problem is I'd, I'd save that, wouldn't I? You know, I'm going to hit cancel. What I'm going to do... We have empty ship designs. I'm going to use one ship design where it's going to be a, a cruiser here. So we can fit a bunch of different types of weapons. And I'm going to just see what the base range of some of these weapons are. Because I'm honestly really curious. So, fusion beams here. We just have one. We also have uh, neutron blasters, yeah. Get rid of the bomb. And we'll put on a... Mass Driver, I don't think it has one of those yet. So we have Neutron Blaster, Fusion Beam, Mass Driver, and we have some Laser Cannons. I'll switch those up so that they are no longer point defense. Alright, I would like to see what the range of all these weapons are. Alright, whatever. We'll call it the test. And maybe I'll use this uh, this model in the future. I won't actually build anything with it. But I'll just use it in the future to test weapons so that I can actually see how effective they are. So, with this information, what are the range of these different weapons? So, we have a Neutron Blaster, which is 40. Fusion Beam is only 17. Wow! A really short range. Why would you ever want this weapon? What does it do? I also noticed when I was in combat, it was giving me some special attributes of the weapons that I'm not seeing here. So this definitely needs a lot of work. The ship design aspect of the game definitely needs a lot of work because this is all details that are lacking that really need to be here on the ship designer when I'm designing my ships. I don't want to be in combat figuring out how good a weapon is. But yeah, fusion beams just seem like they're terrible. They do no damage. I'm not sure what damage procs are, though. That's something different. And the fusion beam has that, and none of the other weapons do. But this is an incredibly short-range weapon. Looks like there's no difference between the neutron blaster and the mass driver. 
nor the laser cannon. So all of these more or less have the same range. Okay. All right, well, we learned a little bit of something there. And we can just actually honestly just scrap this uh, design as we're not needing to use this. This is just a test. All right. Okay, let's... Uh, we got some more... I think we already checked out the production and everything. We're good. All right. Let's go on to the next turn. So we finally got that building from Ptolemy 2. Let's see what it does. Well, it sure didn't help morale. Not sure what else it did, honestly. So, yeah, that I don't think that was really a good thing for us. Uh, I, I don't really think that did, it, that did anything, honestly. So in the future, we will not be building any more of those. All right, let's uh, continue on. All right, another space pirate fleet. We have a space factory. Completing a job here. Now, we probably want to get that space factory over to Gammon, where we plan to have a colony. So let's start moving it in that direction. And what else can we do? Not a whole lot. And there's not going to be a whole lot we can do about the space pirate fleet. It's going to actually go by us. I don't think it's really going to be a threat. We're more or less going to just come into Gammon, lock it down, send the damage fleets over to get repaired. But we'll lock down Gammon. Make sure it's safe, and then go from there. So, Alright, we got uh, some population growth. And also, the research is completed, as well as uh, the building on Colony 5. But we queued up a few buildings, so that should be fine. Let's go ahead and check out uh, Soul Prime here. We don't need this guy on food production. Put him on research. Get that research going. And we were cleaning up. Pollution, I think we're good on that. We don't need to do that anymore. And I don't think we have any other buildings we want to build. So let's go ahead and go to the research. Just a minute of your time, President. So we don't care about spying at the moment because spying isn't in the game. So let's uh, choose the population growth as that's the wiser choice. Our scientists have made... All right. Now we've got a bunch of research here that... We really don't know what any of them do because I haven't really focused this far down the line. So let's see. We've got this, which is... Going to give us... Oh, okay, so we can buy things out at a cheaper cost. I don't think that's a very big priority for us. We've got a choice here, so we either get uh, Alien Management Center. All right, so that helps with assimilation, which uh, might help us with the Mershon, for instance. But, again, not a high priority. And then we have Alien Psychology. Okay, so this helps uh, diplomacy. Again, this is not a high priority. So these two are not high priorities. We have artificial gravity. So this gives us a orbital shipyard, which makes uh, ship costs go down. That's good. We already have one thing that does that, uh, the uh, space elevator. So yet another building to reduce the cost of ships is nice. Although it is restricted to only planets with a moon. So, okay. Uh, or we have the Moon Laboratory, which gives us uh, research if that planet has a moon as well. So, both of those sound pretty darn good. We have Tachyon Physics, which gives us a scanner. 
which increases uh, energy weapons. So this is another battle computer. And a scanner, which in I guess is going to be giving us increased range for our scanning. And communications, which gives us more command points. Well, that all sounds good across the board. Um, we don't really need a fleet right now because, again, we're, we're kind of trapped in this pocket uh, the, of the galaxy. So I would say that's not a high priority, but a lot of those things are nice uh, if we were to get a little more opened up and actually have to deal with other races. Uh, ground batteries. All right, so this is just a beam-based weapons on uh, the planets. Automated repair units. So this goes in a ship, I guess, and repairs the hull. And then we have a guidance system. Okay, so this this works like how it worked in Master Orion 2. There was a similar tech that uh, would allow you to switch missile targets. If the target of a missile had been destroyed, it would switch to another target. So that's a nice priority for us too. We're relying a lot on missile weapons, so that might be nice for us. Uh, we saw terraforming here, which that might be my highest priority so far. Battle pods and fighter bays, heavy armor or reinforced hull, ion drive, which gives us a speed bonus and a travel speed for the uh, on the map, which is nice. I like having uh, that speed or a ion pulse beam. I'd probably take the engines over the pulse beam. If we were to take that, I would say out of this, uh, terraforming is my is the thing that I like the most. Again, we're, we're trapped in this pocket of the galaxy. We only have what planets are here. So if we can actually terraform them and make them better, that makes our position a lot better. So I say uh, we'll do that for now, for sure. And I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner signing out.